So let's talk about grief, eh? Welcome back to our channel or welcome to our channel if this is your first time here. My name is Elena. I'm Olivia. We are sisters and we have started this channel to help people. We are, right. our main mission really is to make mental health care accessible and affordable slash free because that's how we feel it should be. Um, and we don't know how long that's going to take, but this is a step in the right direction. Hopefully our videos and our discussions will inspire you um, or, you know, kind of spark some ideas on things that you can start doing in your own life. So today we are going to talk about grief. And if you're immediately like, ooh, not a subject I want to touch, or maybe it, it doesn't apply to me, the entire world is going through this pandemic. And even if you're watching the video later on, you have been through this. So you might not think like I did. I did not perceive this as a time of grieving until I discussed it with you. And now that I realized that, I really want to help you guys understand um, what it is that we're going through all in our different ways. Um, but there's kind of a cycle that we want to um, kind of dive into today. Grief is a big one. And I think a lot of people will think this doesn't apply to me. I have never lost anyone, but grief is bigger than that. Grief is an umbrella that covers so many different types of loss. Um, grief can be a breakup, the loss of a relationship. Grief can be losing your job, your home. You can grieve a body part if you have an amputation. Um, you can grieve if and when you receive a diagnosis um, and in any major life changes you can grieve. So all of those things fall under the umbrella of grief. Um, grief and change management, if you're familiar like at work with the change management process, are very similar. Um, and so really you can grieve any type of big event. We're all going through a huge change right now. so. This is relevant to everybody and it is kind of a serious topic and we really want to do a mix of serious and lighthearted, but the serious stuff does need to be talked about. It's the important stuff. So to start, it's really important to know that there is a grief cycle. The Kubler-Ross cycle is what we're going to reference today and there are five steps um, and there is a an, like an edited seven step version. It just kind of breaks down a couple more steps. We're gonna stick to five um, and just talk about the, the five stage Kubler-Ross cycle. Something to remember is that no matter what you are feeling, it is valid. It's a real feeling and you should not judge yourself or feel guilty for whatever you're feeling right now. I'm going to go over the first couple of stages and keep in mind as we're describing each step um, in this cycle everybody goes on it in different ways you might jump to step three and then back to one and then to four we'll go over them in order but there really is no order it's really just important like elena said to recognize and accept how you are feeling and then go from there so the first uh stage in the grief process is denial and so this can look like avoidance fear confusion shock um, or even elation uh, sometimes you know it's kind of the other end of the spectrum um, and you might not realize that that's how you're feeling and that's exactly how I was until we recently discussed this um, and so you know I have a tendency to subconsciously shove my feelings down so instead of, you know, like thinking about and accepting the situation for what it is, I was just kind of in my own head, like, yeah, I'm stuck at home, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm fine. Everything's, you know, relatively good. A lot of people have it worse. So, you know, I'm not going to dwell on um, what's going on, but that's not a healthy thing to do. Um, and so for me, it was kind of an avoidance uh, response 
For others, you might, you might have felt shocked and fearful from the beginning. You know, again, everybody is affected differently, so just recognize what stage um, you're at. Each day, it changes every single day. Um, so the first stage was denial. The second stage is anger. Um, this can look like frustration, irritation, anxiety. I have definitely felt all of those things the most. Like I said, I bottle things up and then whenever they start to surface is when I start to feel anxious um, and irritated and sometimes even angry over nothing. Um, and so this happened to me the other day um, and I realized, okay, I just need to take a step back and the next day I took what I call a reset day where I pretty much did nothing. I personally watched Disney movies most of the day um, I did some yoga, you know, just some self-care, but I did not put any pressure on myself. Um, if you're at all like me, I'm a perfectionist, and I definitely can beat myself up when I'm not feeling good. And um, that's just something to keep in mind. You know, this is a hard situation. If you are feeling um, angry, frustrated, irritated, an anxious, take note of that. Tell yourself it's okay to feel that way. And then try to think about what things comfort you. And I really, really do not suggest comfort food. Um, I know that's been a big topic on social media. Um, don't beat yourself up if you haven't eaten great or you haven't been exercising, whatever. Again, this is hard, it's an adjustment, but do your best to take care of yourself. Number three, bargaining. I think a lot of people probably think of bargaining as trying to make a deal with God that if if you keep this from happening or if you make it so that this isn't so, I'll never sin again or I'll never, like when I was a kid, I would say like, like, oh, if I don't get caught sneaking out of my window, I'll never do it again. <laughs> That is an example of bargaining, but there are, it means a lot more than that. Um, bargaining is, for me, it just means finding a meaning or trying to find a meaning, struggling to find a meaning. Um, for others, it could mean uh, reaching out and sharing your story. Um, bargaining is just trying to make sense of the situation. I tend to get stuck in this one because everything has to have a meaning for me and I try to let that go and I try to work through that but sometimes I just can't help but ask why and that's a common theme in bargaining is why is this happening it's different from denial denial is this is not happening <laughs> bargaining is why is this happening so if you get stuck here if you're overthinking you just have to find what works for you for me i have to come to terms with the fact that it just is and sometimes it doesn't have a meaning if you let yourself keep going and keep trying to find a meaning you're gonna get stuck on this step for a while. I personally believe that everything has a meaning, but you might not see it right away. So it might be a lot later on after you've healed and moved on that you're like, oh, that's why that happened. That led me to where I am now. And it's, I'm glad, you know, in a sense, I'm glad that it happened. When I'm struggling there, a lot of times the affirmation that I pick um, either to meditate on or just kind of start my day with is this is how it is right now and it's okay because like you said there is a meaning but I'm not gonna see it right now or in the near future so in order to move on in order to get to that final stage of acceptance I have to let it go the next step is depression and the first thing I want to say is that this is not a chronic depression. This is a, this is different from the diagnosis of depression. This is a phase. This is a situational bout of depression. And sometimes it doesn't even feel like depression. It can feel like being overwhelmed. Um, sometimes even like being in a fight or flight. Um, you can become hostile, feel helpless, hopeless. 
Um, it can really be all kinds of forms, but the main thing to understand is that it isn't permanent. Again, this is how it is right now, and that's okay. It's not gonna be like this forever. Again, getting stuck here um, can feel like you don't see an end in sight. You just don't see any possibility of this getting better. Uh, you cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think when you're stuck in the depression phase, something to work on would be just identifying, basically identifying what's going on in your mind. What are you telling yourself that's making you feel like this? And find an affirmation that contradicts that that works on the belief that that's not true. Um, find a meditation that is specific to what you're feeling. Uh, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling angry, uh, meditation for hopelessness, meditation for anger. Meditation, so going within and addressing the beliefs and the thoughts that are causing this negative mindset because a belief is just a thought that you think over and over and you allow to live in your head. So you want to figure out what thoughts you're allowing in your head and replace them with positive ones. And then one more suggestion in addition to that is do self care. Do something that the next day or the next week you're going to feel better because you did that. Think about it that way. So it could be a bath, it could be watching a movie, it could be stretching, yoga, meditation for sure. Um, going on a walk, do something for yourself every day, even if it's five or 10 minutes, and that will help you no matter what situation you're in, even just a little. When I'm having a bad mental health day and I just cannot combat what is going on in my brain, I say, you know what? I surrender and I'm just gonna be really nice to myself today, okay? Whatever it is that I'm gonna tell myself, whatever it is that I'm gonna feel, I'm just gonna feel it. I'm just gonna let it happen. And I'm also not gonna judge myself for it. So kind of like what I said at the beginning, whatever it is that you're feeling, it gets, if it's to a point where you just can't fight it, then just let it happen. Feel it, it's okay. Be very nice to yourself, take good care of yourself, allow yourself to get all of it out. And the next day is gonna be a lot better, I promise. Take the pressure off of yourself. The, the pressure that you're constantly applying with your to-do list, with the stress of the situation, whatever it is, allow yourself to just be and forget about all the rest. Focus on your self-care and you will feel better. The fifth stage of the grief cycle is acceptance. And this is something that I'm just going to touch on very lightly today because we are dedicating an entire video to getting to the stage um, and kind of transforming this whole situation into something positive in some way. So acceptance can look like exploring options, um, putting a new plan in place, uh, just generally moving on. Um, so again, you might get to a point of acceptance and then you're back in depression or whatever. That's okay. It is part of the process. It's okay. What we want to do is help you get to acceptance and for the most part, stay there. It's going to take a conscious effort. Um, people don't heal from grief without doing anything. You have to be a part of the process. At the same time, you have to be forgiving of yourself. So stay committed to healing and to, to moving towards acceptance, but be gentle. Understand that it is not easy and you're going to fall and trip up and slip and move back and forth and it's okay. This is how it is and it's okay. If you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, we are doing a part two that goes into the acceptance phase. So helping you take this information um, and this knowledge awareness and transforming it into something good for you. Thank you guys so, so much for watching.
we truly from the bottom of our hearts i know everybody says this but like seriously we were talking earlier about you know friends family who've reached out and said that they got something out of our video it means the world to us so even if you don't tell us it it just it means a lot that um you're watching and that we're making a difference so um if you do want to tell us we'd love to hear it um comment like subscribe thanks guys you're the best yeah don't keep plowing through you're not a snow plow corona <laughs> is getting to us too okay <laughs> No, no, <laughs> sister. No. This is just how we are. <laughs> so the lesson is always cheese. cheese. <laughs> We're pretty spicy. Okay. Affordable slash free for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a snowplow, I'm so sorry. Okay. That's so. an improvement. <laughs> Give us the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> if you're watching this video, if you're a human, unless you're a snowplow, <laughs> you need to heal.